Alright, so in this video we're going to talk about how to call an API in JavaScript and the way we can do that is with the XML HTTP request. Now I actually used this in my last video but I wanted to make this its own separate video in case people didn't really care about this video and they just wanted this information exclusively. But you guys should go check this out, it's pretty cool. We call an API to get the price of Bitcoin and display it on a web page using Flask. But anyway, W3Schools has a little page about the XML HTTP request object and how to use it, but I think it's it's better to see it in practice and actually watch it being used. So that's why I wanted to create this video. So I have this basic Flask web application. We have the slash route, which just renders an index.html document. Um, and then we're going to create another route for the API. And what I want this API to do is just return a JSON object of a message, like a hello, how are you doing, or something like that. You know, you can make it whatever. But I'm going to make a route called message. And it's only going to accept get requests, just like the slash route. And here's my index.html. Um, it's pretty basic. We got nothing. We have a body and then a header with, with nothing in it. Um, so first I'm going to work on this part, the API, and then we're going to work on index.html. So I'm going to create a dictionary called message, and it's going to have a key of message and a value of whatever we want our message to be. So, hey, how are you today? You know, you can make this obviously, whatever you want. And then we want to turn this dictionary into JSON. And Flask actually has this little package in a Flask module called JSONify. And what you can do is you can use that to turn it into JSON. So you do JSONify, it's a function, and then the parameter is our message, our dictionary. So I'm going to save. I think that's all we have to do. And we're going to test this. So I'm going to run it. Make sure everything goes up. All right, looks good. So we're going to test this, and the way I'm going to test this, I have this, uh, I have this application called Postman. And if you've never seen this before, go download it. It allows you to call and test out APIs before you put it in the code. So you can make different requests. You can give it different parameters. And make sure everything works correctly before you actually implement it in your code. So what I want to do is I'm just going to copy localhost here on port 5000. I'm going to paste it in here and I'm going to put our route for message. And then when I hit send, what I'm expecting is this in JSON format, right? Whoops. So let's uh, let's send that and make sure we get back. Yep. Message, hey, how are you today? Perfect. So now we know our API is working. And now we just need to use the XML HTTP request to do something with that in JavaScript, on the JavaScript side, on the client side. So I have the basic framework, um, and I have this function called message. At the very beginning, we create a new XML HTTP request object. That's what request is. It's a new object of this type. And then we're going to open, and then we're going to say it's a git, and then the second parameter is where we're going. So that's part of it, but now we have to add message to the end because this is the URL that we're actually sending the request to. All right, and the next part's very important. It's request.onload. And what this is doing, it's setting an event handler. So it's saying, okay, when, when it loads, what are we wanting to do? Well, we're going to run this function. And then inside of this, we're going to define what all we want it to do when we get a response back. So at the very beginning, I have data, which is it's parsing this dot response, the response of the request. And then what we can do is we can do console.log. And actually, I might make another variable and call it message, which is going to be data and then message. It's going to grab this part of the JSON object, which there's only one part, but we still have to define it. So data and then message with a capital M because that's what we made it. 
All right, and now let's console.log message so we can bring up the log and make sure everything looks good. And then what I wanted to do at the very end is send the request, All right? This actually doesn't happen until we get a response back. It's just an event handler. So we actually have to send the request at the very end and then run this function. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an ID in this header and let's call it message header. And I'm going to create another variable called header and it's going to be get document dot get element by ID message header and then we can do header dot in our HTML is going to equal message. So if all works out, what it's going to do is it's going to take our message, which is our response, and put it into this header. So let's try it. Let's uh, let's open this. And of course, yeah, I forgot one one pretty important step. We don't have anything that's calling this function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a button down here. And it's going to say, like, get message. And then on click, we're going to run the message function. OK, now let's try it. Now that we have a way. And let's bring up, hit F12. Let's bring up the console here and make sure it spits out, hey, how are you doing today? So we can see that it successfully called our local host API that we have running. And it got back the response, it parsed it out of the JSON, and it displayed it in this header here. So this is a pretty basic example of how to use the XML HTTP request, but I think it's super, super powerful, and I wanted to share it with you guys. So if you like this kind of content, don't forget to hit subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.